Hi there. As uh, I've mentioned on the uh, Extras channel, I've recently um, become pretty interested in getting my amateur radio license. It's something I've actually wanted to do for years and years, ever since I was a kid. But uh, of course, I simply didn't have the knowledge to uh, even consider getting a license. And of course, you can study. I mean, uh, I hear all the time of kids like, you know, 10 years old, if that getting their license, but you have to study for it. You actually have to learn the material, and I just never had the ambition to do that. Um, the last um, the last time I really had any interest in getting my license was about three years ago, and uh, I found an online exam, and I pretty much failed it um, consistently, so I forgot about it, or didn't forget about it. I just gave up on it. But, uh, in recent times I've been interested in getting my license again and uh, as it turns out electrical engineering teaches you most of what you need to know to pass an amateur radio examination and uh, Industry Canada uh, has now has their own official online exam made up of the exact same questions a real test would have and uh, I not only pass it consistently, but I pass with honors, which would give me a couple of extra privileges than just uh, than just a straight pass. So I've been really wanting to get my license. Unfortunately, I can't do that anytime soon. Um, the next examination isn't until January. It's scheduled. The examinations are held on a scheduled basis. But I was still able to become a member of the school's amateur radio club, which I have since done. You don't need a license to do that. And uh, when you do that, you get a key to this wonderful room, which I am going to give you a tour of today. Obviously, um, uh, there's a lot of radios in here, and obviously you cannot transmit on them unless you have a license, so I can't transmit on any of this equipment but I can freely listen on it and uh, enjoy all the other aspects of the room. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm pretty excited to get to show you. There's a lot of cool stuff in here. Um, first, I guess I'll show you the actual central command station here. We've got a lot of cool radios here. Um, the centerpiece is this Kenwood model TS450S. Uh, this is a HF transceiver from around 1991-92. It's a beautiful radio, very good looking radio. Um, based on reviews I've read, it is a pretty good radio. And uh, yeah, this guy's hooked up to an HF antenna on the roof. Uh, it tunes from 1 megahertz up to 40 megahertz. Oh, We're actually getting a transmission right now on uh, 14 megahertz, 0.255. We're hearing one side of a conversation. That had all this leaded case wiring in. It was absolutely perfect the way they make the wiring harnesses in that thing. And then they had another one. Now this thing can broadcast with up to a hundred watts of power. And so if I had my license, I could probably reach that guy. He's coming in. He's uh he's coming in pretty good. But uh alas. Transmission will have to wait. I'm gonna set this right here. Yeah, the repeater just became active. Our local, one of our local repeaters. It's the first time I've heard the repeater uh, in here. It's kind of odd here in a big city. Well, big, uh, big uh, by uh, the standards here of uh, 50,000 people and there's hardly anyone on VHF on the local repeater yet back home mom's house town of less than 10,000 uh, I hear lots of people on the local repeater it's quite active kinda odd I guess that's the difference between a city and rural uh, uh, area but anyway yeah that's the HF radio and uh, I have received CB on it, Channel 6 of course, where all the big talkers with their illegal amplifiers go. 
and uh, its power supply is right here and here's the call sign of this station VE9 UNB so uh, that's the uh, that's the call sign you use and of course if I had my license with my own call sign I could use this equipment under my own call sign if I wanted to I just noticed um, someone hooked up a pair of Bose external speakers to this radio it was running off the internal speaker originally I don't know, sounds just fine. I don't know if they sound better than the internal speaker or not. Up here, we have an ICOM IC271A VHF transceiver, probably from the 80s. This guy's hooked up to this power supply right here, but it doesn't have an antenna on it. So uh, it's pretty useless. I just turned it on to uh, let you guys have a look at it. Power it off here. And, uh,. Here's a sister model of that radio, the UHF version, the ICOM IC471H. And uh, yeah, this is a UHF transceiver. It's not hooked up at all, not to power or an antenna. Something else about this HF transceiver that's cool, and it was an incredibly novel feature um, in this radio's time in the early 90s, is it can be computer controlled. Now, unfortunately, someone logged off this computer they're not supposed to do that this computer is supposed to be always logged on all the time someone left their flash drive in it too but uh... yeah you can use the computer to control this radio using uh... some software programs and uh... you can type on the keyboard to transmit uh... cw which is morse code and uh... the radio transmits the morse code that you type and yeah it's uh... it's pretty neat and of course our little VHF handheld here, this is a Baofeng, Baofeng makes oodles and oodles of super cheap handheld VHF and UHF uh, transceivers, this is a dual band VHF and UHF, I think all the ones they make are. And uh, yeah, these are good radios for what they are and for what they cost, you can get these for as, li as little, I think typical is like $50, $60, but you can get them for as little as 30 bucks. and for an amateur radio dual band transceiver that's super duper cheap I mean for an ICOM or a Kenwood you'll pay usually two or three hundred dollars at least and uh, yeah they're really cheap radios but they're pretty good for what they are they're built quite well um, this particular unit gives you an RF burn uh, if you touch the battery terminals while you're transmitting that's kinda dumb poor design but uh, yeah it works and you heard the repeater uh, broadcast its call sign over it. I was hoping someone was going to come on it, but evidently not. What else do we have here? We have this really cool clock with a vacuum fluorescent display. MFJ is the brand name. I've never heard of something like this. It's not your typical alarm clock. This was meant specifically for amateur radio use. It says sold and or serviced by Ham Radio Atlantic in St. John, New Brunswick, a couple hours away from here. Model MFJ101 24 hour solid state digital clock. And uh, pretty nice. It's got two buttons to set the time, slow or fast. And it's got a switch so you can switch between 50 or 60 hertz. How about that? So, uh, ooh. Contest advice 2015. There's a amateur radio DXing contest happening here. Um, basically, anyone, whether you're licensed or not, can come in and see how many long distance contacts you can make on HF within your allotted time, a uh, couple hours or more. And uh, a licensed person will be in the room, and that's why unlicensed people can uh, do it too. I was encouraged to uh, participate. I don't feel like it. I'm too tired. There's too much going on. And uh, I, I just, I, this is so new to me. I've never transmitted on amateur radio yet. The first time I came in here with my prof, who's pretty much the boss of this place, he, he offered to let me transmit to someone we had made contact with, and I'm like, nah, that's okay. I guess I'm too shy. Um, what else we got in here? Over here, under here, we've got this really old IBM. PC series computer, Celeron, Intel Celeron. It uh it boots into oh some form of Unix, I forget. Some form of Unix. I, I booted up recently but I forget what it ran. Pretty nice uh floating arm. 
desk lamp here, housing an incandescent lamp, tons of cables and stuff here, like really thick electrical cable, quite impressive. Um, the Baofeng's charger is absolutely going nuts because it can't, because the radio is not in it. Just a few of the many certificates and QSO cards we've gotten over time from uh, contacts we've made. There's a, a newspaper article from probably the 19, I'd say late 80s, early 90s. Ooh, there's an older picture. I'm, I don't think that's this room. I think the station used to be housed in a different room. and. Uh, that picture is probably from the 1950s or 60s. I see some leather jackets, probably 50s or 60s. We are a member of the DX Century Club, meaning we've made at least 100 uh, long distance contacts. If we uh, actually, let me go back over here. We have a lot of cool stuff on the ceiling, a lot of maps, radio amateur prefixes, our call sign once again. Anyone, uh, if anyone watching this uh, uh, transmits on HF and wants to try and reach us, whoever you make contact with, tell them Trent sent you. <laughs> Earned me some brownie points. Over here, a chart of all the radio spectrum and how it is allocated here in Canada. Here's all the repeaters in the province of New Brunswick. Some Atlantic region. Uh, uh, HF nets as of 1998 I wonder if that's still uh, if that's still if, 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 if anyone's still broadcasting on those at all what the various amateur bands are commonly used for another charter of the repeaters in the province another map of the province very nice really old headphones right here Tel telex. Telex, wow. I don't even know what that is. That's a gold advanced oscilloscope. Interesting. I, uh, one of these showed up in the uh, student development studio a while back and I made a video of it. I've yet to upload it as of filming this though. Some Hewlett Packard lab equipment, a digital multimeter, LED display and an attenuator. Wow, look at that. Mechanical display. Some computer keyboards and mice up there. Okie doke. And uh, there's a bunch of crap down there. I don't know what it is. I don't know what this suitcase thing, suit, suitcase thing is. And uh, someone's drawing some dots here. Maybe that's. Uh, this might be where some of the uh, contacts we've made. It's kind of neat. Yeah, that's about it. Here's a look at the uh, the amateur radio station at school. Pretty neat place. This is the third time I've been up here. I like to just uh, come up and just listen, see if I can hear anybody on H HF. I'd like to try and hear some people on VHF, but I've been disappointed thus far. And. Uh, just enjoy all the history, all the history and legacy that's in this room. It's just saturated in it. It's awesome. So uh, there you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed this uh, little tour, and I'll see you later. So I've got to turn the ta the uh, the uh, time base up a bit, and look at that. You can see. Let me set the trigger to a bit more manageable value. Ever since I was a kid, for years and years now, probably almost 10 years, I've been wanting to get my amateur radio license. And uh, the school has its own amateur radio station. The call sign is VE9UNB.